Today's video is about how you can leverage contrast therapy to help you alleviate lower back pain and sciatica specifically. Contrast therapy is used all over the place in sport to help people deal with the consequences of the tissue damage that comes from vigorous exercise, be it in the sporting arena or in the gym arena, whether they're using saunas and ice baths or whether they're using simple cold compresses and heat compresses to help optimize recovery. We're gonna go through what contrast therapy is first and then give you this short guide of step-by-step -step on how you can actually do it at home and benefit, especially if you're someone suffering from lower back pain or sciatica. Contrast therapy essentially works by manipulating the circulation to and through the area that we are targeting. So in the case of the lower back, we're going to put some heat on that area and that's going to cause a vasodilation effect, opening out the blood vessels and supply to drive more nutrition, nutrients and oxygen, fuel essentially, to the cells in that particular region to undergo their processes. At the same time, when we pop the ice on, we're going to constrict that area and that's going to restrict the blood flow, create kind of a, an, an emptying essentially of the area. And then when we uh, put that heat back on or the body returns to normal temperature, it's gonna flush through that area again, dragging with it some of those waste products, cellular debris, waste metabolites, lactic acid, etc., to clear that area out. Essentially, in with the good and out with the bad. Being that we're all human beings, contrast therapy is gonna work for all of us. Yes, we might be using it to achieve different objectives. It might be working out or, or recovering from a hard workout that you're trying to use it for. It might be recovering from an injury specifically. But the simple fact of the matter is contrast bathing, contrast therapy is a freely available tool that we can all use to optimize our recovery process. When we think about back pain and sciatica specifically, we understand that it is caused by an injury specific to the lower back. It's most commonly gonna be in, a, in the region between the L4, L5, and S1 region of the lumbar spine. That's those last two segments of our lower back that are injured in some way, shape, or form. And that might be that it's causing local lower back pain. It might be that it's causing sciatica down the leg. I've got many other videos on the channel that go into these in excruciating detail, so I won't bore you with the details here. But the simple truth of the matter when we're talking about contrast therapy is we're using that intervention to target the source of the injury. Very confusing sometimes in cases of sciatica where the pain is actually perhaps in the leg and it's generated from the lower back. So it's no good in that particular case using the contrast therapy on the leg where it hurts. We've got to target the source in that lower lumbar region. That's really important. And then when it comes to back pain specifically or sciatica and the causes of that from a diagnostic point of view, we find this is just uh, from, from clinical experience and experience with the members that those with a couple of conditions that affect the size of the holes where the nerves come out of the spine, uh, these little bony tunnels, conditions where that size changes can benefit most from this. So th we're talking about where we essentially have a, a degree of spinal stenosis occurring. So that could be a spondylolisthesis. It could be a particularly severe disc bulge. It could be significant degenerative uh, change in the discs that causes them to drop in height. That takes place over many years. It might also be termed spinal arthritis. But in all of those conditions, we get a change in the architecture where the nerves come out. The spaces are smaller, and therefore these individuals often when they suffer a, and maybe, maybe you've got this as well, maybe, maybe when you or, or they suffer from a relatively objectively minor tweak or strain to the soft tissues in that particular region, you suffer unfortunately with disproportionate levels of symptoms. And that's often because at the root of it, the inflammation builds up in that area and we need a way to be able to drain that. And that's where contrast therapy can be particularly effective or is particularly effective um, if you've got those particular changes in your body. It's gonna help all of us if you've got lower back pain or sciatica, but for those individuals, it's particularly effective. Then it comes to the nuts and bolts of what precisely we're going to be doing. So step one, we need to find the right region of our body. A very easy way to do this is locate your belly button on the front, and then if you circle round to the back, you're gonna be around about this level of the spine. You can see the green vertebra, the last two green vertebra on the front here, those are the L4 and L5 segments. And as they interject with the uh, sacrum, which is the orange bone here, that's gonna be that primary region at the source of more or less all cases of lower back pain, some sort of injury in this region. So that's where we want to target our application of heat and ice. Uh, the, another, another surface marker, if you will, is if you find those bony dimples at the base of your, lum of your, of your lumbar region, so to speak, on either side, that's these two bony bits, okay? The important thing to note is these are below the L5-S1 joint. So when you find those bony points, come into the middle of the spine and then come up about an inch and that's where you're going to want to put the heat and ice or on, on, uh, contrast the, the heat and ice. The, it will generally be around the level of your waistband of your trousers, skirt, dress, whatever you're wearing, it's gonna be around about that waistband level, which is very convenient for, for some of the steps. So what are we gonna do? First thing, we locate the right spot we've got. Secondly, we're gonna pop the heat on that area. So whether we're using a heat pack that goes in the microwave or whether you're using a hot water bottle, stick it on there for three to five minutes. 
We're then gonna take that off immediately and replace that with a pack of frozen peas or one of those flexible ice packs that you can get online. Exactly the same spot. Again, sometimes with the ice, you put it in a little towel just so it's not directly on the skin. That can help um, just make it a little more comfortable or pleasant or reduce the risk of any ice burns if it's particularly freezing in your freezer. Um, we pop that straight on this area again and then leave that there for three to five minutes. Now you can repeat this through three times. It's gonna take you about 20 to 30 minutes and then do that as many times a day as you wish. Generally speaking, we say, because you, you've got to put a line somewhere, three times a day is perfect. But if you've just flared up your lower back, if you've just got that injury, and maybe if you've got that degenerative change or those changes, that spinal stenosis that's taking place because of maybe a, a particularly severe disc herniation, then you can do this more frequently during the day, especially if that flare up is very recent. It's just going to help that process of draining excess inflammation in this particular region of the lower back. So here's some pro tips to help you execute on this a little bit more effectively without risk of problem afterwards. The very first and most important one is don't stand there holding the thing on your back. Tuck it down the trousers or something like that. Go hands-free so that you're not having to be there twisting for an extended period of time. And as a quick tangent, the same would apply if you're doing this therapy for the neck. Don't stand there like so. We can use something to hold it in place so we don't have to twist our body and ultimately aggravate the issue while we're doing something positive. The next thing you can do is always sit down leaning against the the back of the chair and use the, the compression there to help hold it and press it onto the area of your lower back. That's a particularly nice tip, but ultimately we want to try and go hands-free and have some means of doing that in an, in an effective way so we can either potter around the house and do other things in an upright position. Don't do any bending or lifting or twisting whilst we're doing this particular uh, contrast therapy. Uh, but we want to go hands-free so we can do other stuff because ultimately the ease with which we can do this contrast therapy is directly related to the frequency with which we actually do it and benefit from it. If it's too much of a faff, too much trouble, then we're not gonna end up doing it and ultimately we won't benefit. When it comes to recommending contrast therapy, it is something that you should be doing if you've got low back pain. The simple reality is that it is a bit of a faff though. Having to go back and forth sometimes is the barrier to getting it done or not. And if you're not gonna do it, it's better just doing some ice instead of doing nothing. If the inconvenience and the faff of doing contrast therapy is just something that's putting, putting you off. Recently, we've come into contact with this particular device from Therabody, which is the Recovery Therm Cube, which is really cool. This came in the other week, and it's one of those devices that you can use to um, do contrast therapy yourself. It comes with a nice little strap. You can strap it straight onto your lower back and having used it, it's actually pretty cool. We are going to be doing a separate video on this particular device, which we'll link to pros and cons, how to use it, etc. But ultimately there are ways in which we can use technology. This is obviously a new way that can help you make life easier for yourself. You can just strap this thing onto your lower back, strap it in, turn it on, and it'll do the contrast therapy in five minute intervals for you. So it goes hot, then it goes cold, then it goes hot, then it goes cold. It's great if you can do it at home, for free. But if you do have the tools, resources, means, or the, want the convenience, then something like this can really, really help you. And as I said, we'll have a full video on that, which will be linked either up here or down in the description so you can check it out too. Rounding things off, I hope you found this video helpful. Ultimately, you should be incorporating contrast therapy into your recovery routine, especially if you have some degree of degenerative change in your spine, it's going to help you, especially manage those flare-ups, which can be absolutely excruciating. Sometimes they can really stop you from doing more or less anything. And something as simple as this is a great alternative to using non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen, etc., or more severe anti-inflammatories because it has no side effects is targeted, remembering that inflammation is a good process. And if we're taking anti-inflammatories to calm everything down, it can sometimes have undesirable consequences, not least the fact that it aggravates our gut and maybe can create issues there, the very place where we get nutrition coming into our body to help us heal. So having a mechanism like contrast therapy to directly intervene in a target area to help optimize the recovery process, it's a positive thing. It's something that is enhancing our body rather than suppressing something. And that's really important to think about. It'll move toward, it's a move towards a more regenerative based approach to looking after your back rather than trying to suppress and stop things happening within the body. Hopefully it's been helpful. If you did find it helpful, let us know in the comments any questions you might have and consider giving this a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all the latest videos.